Well, welcome to Maker to Business Workshop. Uh, we are talking about uh, bridging the gap between companies and Fab Labs today. And the mediators today are, well, me, Rosiane. I am leading the Fab Lab of Casa Firjans today in Rio de Janeiro. And then Karina. Hi, I'm a content specialist for Casas Firjan. I work with Rosi. And well, we do a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and unfortunately, Luisa cannot be here with, with us. Um, but I hope she can get into in this meeting until the finish, until the end. And I'm kind of nervous, but <laughs> let's move on. Uh, let me show you a bit more about Casa Sfirjan in a video before we start, okay? You are watching oh, the só video? Na, só põe na tela cheia. Pra gente tá minimizado. Uh -huh. Tá vendo o vídeo agora? O vídeo não tá aparecendo não, Rose. Não. A gente tá no seu PDF. Ok. Sorry, you're speaking in Portuguese. It's just technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> ok. Yeah, now the video is on. Tá sem som. Technical stuff from 2021. Let's try again. <laughs> It's a really good video. It worked. <laughs> Realize your knowledge is out. If the future does not yet exist, have you ever considered that you can help create it? And if you feel you're not prepared, did you know you can develop new skills? What do you do when you realize your knowledge is outdated? Would you be able to provide guidance to a child about what they could do for work when they grow up? How do you react when innovation impacts your life and your business? What is your attitude to face so many challenges and new realities? Casa Firjan offers lectures, courses, workshops, consultancy services, exhibitions and studies to connect you to the questions of today and to help you uncover the answers. Live the future today. So this is Casa Firjan. And this is the beautiful site where we work that you guys could see on the video. Uh, whenever, if ever you are in Rio, please come visit us. We have a very nice structure. It is, all, it is open to the public and we have a very nice fab lab as well <laughs> that did not feature that much on the video, but we have, we would be very happy to welcome you all. Yes. And our agenda today uh, is to start with a presentation of digital, fab of the digital fabrication opportunities. Then we are moving into the mural to the first steps it's our co-creation space. And then we will talk about our experience. We want to hear you and not just talk about our experience. We want to understand what's happening in your Fab Lab. And then we are define a persona and co-create a service together. We hope to do it uh, in one hour. <laughs> And the beginning of this workshop is the fabstorming. We, we were uh, thinking about the question, um, have you ever faced the challenge of making companies and entrepreneurs realize how Fab Labs can support them with their business? Because here in Brazil, uh, we have um, some gap between the Fab Labs and the, the companies, the entrepreneurs, 
are closer, but the companies are distant. And last year, we started to solve this, this gap. Um, and we studied more than 100 business cases that use digital fabrication technologies. And we found some congruences based on we've made an opportunity guide. And this guide is the Fabstorming. And it's a pun to unite fabrication and brainstorming. We, <laughs> we think it's very funny. Um, this tool was created to be used within Casa Fusion courses, and it can also be applied in other contexts, such as case studies, dynamics, workshops, and the and ideation sections. And this is a work in progress, so it will be nice to hear your considerations about our presentation today. And Okay, uh, our challenge beginning uh, uh, when we were searching cases by the production sectorial from Rio de Janeiro. Um, here we had, we have about 10 different industrial sectorial as plastic, fashion, food, or furniture. And when we start our research on internet in the, in the FabLab network, we hope to understand how every kind of industry were using digital fabrication. We thought that plastic could had some specific use and fashion another and etc. But then when we were debating about the cases, we realized that they have intersections and these intersections we call the opportunities. Um, we've mapped out until now seven opportunities of the digital fabrication to the business. For example, in the fashion industry and in the furniture industry, personalization were a trend. And when we add digital technologies to this personalization trend, we can create totally new approaches for business. For example, if I, if I can scan my client body, I can design a product or a service totally adaptable for him. And we have no time to discuss all these opportunities in detail today, but um, I'm going to present that in short, okay? And if you have some question, please chat or um, signalize in some way to open your microphone to discuss with, it, with us, okay? And that is the seven opportunities. The first one, uh, co-production with the user, then fabrication on demand, personalization, decentralized production, new processes, shapes, and materials, open innovation, and production optimization. Um, co-production with the user is my favorite one because it's in, it's empowering the, the people, the customer. Um, what it means, ac the access to digital fabrication tools allows customers to take part in the making of their own product. This is an opportunity to market the project files and their inputs, leaving the final stage of the production to the consumer. Think about how music works today. You don't need to to buy a disc anymore. You can buy a, a file, a music file. So you can buy a product file. Karina? <laughs> oh, you're, you're no, muted. I'm not saying, I'm just agreeing with you. <laughs> okay. And we have some cases to demonstrate this opportunity. And one of them is Looper Shoes. Um, the, the Looper Shoes says, you can make your shoe yourself in your way. The ProF sells a basic kit containing the soles and the manual sewing materials and makes the upper, the upper part of the shoe file available for the user to laser cut wherever they are in the material and color of their choice. And if you have, no, if you don't have a laser cutter, you can use a scissors too. But 
a laser cutter ha has so much fun. And this is the innovation in this opportunity. You cannot uh, just send, just sell a product and send a final product. You can send a do-it-yourself kit and a file too. And the second opportunity is fabrication on demand. Uh, with digital fabrication, it's possible to enable production on demand, changing the logic of stock and mass production. This is an opportunity to fabricate products in a small scale for a niche market, or even to fabricate unique pieces that will provide exclusivity to the customer. And for example, we have Nagami chairs on the Nagami company invests in overcoming the limitations of conventional design to achieve greater efficiency. The company developed its own extrusion method for additive manufacturing, making its line of chairs rich in details and sinuous lines that bring exclusivity to its customers. And the personalization is the 30. As I said before, um, digital fabrication enables the personalization of your products according to your customers' wishes and needs. This is an opportunity to create projects that are tailored to the user's measurements uh, with their preferred materials and shapes totally in accordance with their needs. We have a case in Brazil called digital tailoring. And the digital tailor, Caire Moreira, introduces a concept in which the body is scanned in order to obtain the client's measurements. With that, there are no more, um, no more sizes, uh, like small, medium, or large sizes. And the clothes gain the exact measure of the body of the client. From there, uh, all modeling is done virtually. So we change the logic of the fabrication. Uh, we have no sizes, we have your size. You can do your stuff and it can be applied in, um, in a lot of areas, not just for the personalize your body, but could you imagine in the furniture, you can scan your apartment or your office and made all the, the furniture just for you in your, in your way. On the fourth. Can I just make a little observation about this case in particular? Uh, Kaire is, uh, he has made also a new technology for scanning, which uses a tablet, as you can see in the image. And it's very impressive because it's very simple. You can use in every tablet. And he uh, he provides the service for other brands. He has a, his own brand. And we had a, a festival, a content festival in the Casa Fijan uh, 2019. He was there and he actually saw a close for one of the people in the, in the in the festival. So he scanned his body, made the mold and sew it in our fab lab that has sewing machines. So yeah. it's very interesting how all of this can empower all types of different uh, uh, personalizations. And Carlos is bringing here <laughs> <laughs> the product that Kyrie made. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it stay there in our class, it's a hoodie. But it was like especially tailored to one of the guests of the, the workshop. And Hosey just for saying is on our Fab Lab right now. So yes. everything you can see behind her is the Fab Lab. Ta -da. <laughs> oh, and it was so nice day. Uh, great experience and experiment this, how this technology code. Uh, change the way to make things. It's so cool. And our, fir our fourth uh, opportunity is called decentralized production. And we are in different fab labs here, right? So we know about it. 
Uh, the, the global connection of digital fabrication environments allows the creation of a decentralized production network. This is an opportunity for the project to be made close to the consumer, optimizing logistic process and facilitating the adaptation of designs uh, to local characteristics, uh, <laughs> characteristics and materials. And for example, we have here in Brazil a hub called Camada. Camada is like 3D hubs, uh, but a Brazilian network site. And it's an online platform that connects its customers who want to produce 3D parts with local supplies, facilitating production with this technology. And we um, probably you know OpenDesk too, or another initiative with this concept to facilitate this decentralized production. And the five is new process shapes and materials. Because uh, using digital fabrication, it's possible to experiment with new creative process to dare in the shape of products and to innovate in the choice of materials. This is an opportunity to develop processes or products within a culture of constant experimentation. It's so Fab Lab. Uh, it's like the answers of the Fab Lab. And the business, uh, the companies can use this approach to innovate. And for example, here in Brazil, we have uh, Innova, House, Innova House 3D. And it's a company founded in, two, in 2015 and that uh, based on the research to bring 3D printing process in the civil construction to Brazil. Today, uh, they build uh, houses with, which um, while incorporating the characteristics of this process as architectural elements, do not require the basic steps of traditional civil construction. And Juliana, the CEO of Innova House, uh, was talking to us one month ago, explaining how it changed uh, all process in the civil construction. There are no residuals. Um, there, there, you use what do you, or what you need in the the process, and it changes a lot of things. And you can improve the the constructions to. Uh, there are another forms too. And it's a great thing to experiment. And open innovation is the sixth. And open, open digital fabrication projects allow for collab collaborative development, accelerating the innovation process. This is an opportunity to connect with different ideas, captivate communities of creators, and have a constant improvement process for a uh, distributed and multidisciplinary approach. Um, a classical case of Rose. Oi, tem uma, é, we have a uh, adapt in chat. Okay. <laughs> Pete's answer is the scan visual or leader point cloud. I think is about the Kaire case. Uh huh. It was visual, but we have some other startups work with Fab Lab with the the point cloud. We can connect you with these guys uh, in the end of the workshop if you want. Thank you, Luisa. And Luisa, our thirty mediator is here now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I was a little bit late, but now I'm here. Welcome. And the open innovation case of, of Face Shield, it's a classic, and it was like a um, maybe one of the most production um, uh, so important project last year, made last year. And it was like a, a, a project from the research and they shared the initiative. They so they make a community and several companies too around the world have refined and approved the project by locally producing and supplying the hospital communities in combating the COVID pandemic. And the seven and the, the final opportunity, it's production optimization. It's the most, uh, it's the closest opportunity to the company because have the 
immediately application. What it means, uh, digital fabrication technologies can be used to optimize the company's production process and reduce its production costs. Uh, this is an opportunity to change the way to build and create tools that support or reinvent the process. For example, uh, we have the Volkswagen case. They started to fabricate tools and jigs from 3D printing. And the company was, uh, was able to reduce the time and cost of obtaining this by 90% pos positively impact its assembly line. And we have a case in Brazil, another case in Brazil from GE Aviation. They talked about uh, a process that they are using 30 days to finish using the digital fabrication in the process line, uh, turning to 24 hours. And it was impressive. Um, and this is our seven opportunities. Now uh, you can you can consult in this file to see more cases and know more about the our research. And you can scan this QR code or download in a little moment. And let's begin our co-creation session. And we are putting in the chat a link to a mural. Okay, so I am stopping to share my screen. And we are moving to the mural. Someone uh, has some com some doubt, or is okay, or some curiosity, comment. Okay. So, Karina. No. I was just like. Uh laughing with your okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> no problem um okay could you click in the chat in this link on the chat please it works better in the netbook or a desktop in the cell phone unfortunately we cannot interact with the mural just to watch the interactions happening but if you are using a computer please Click on the link and put your name there. I can see one, two, three, four people. Rose, como a gente está com um tempo curto, acho melhor a gente começar e aí projetar aqui na tela. Pode ser. Eu acho que é uma boa projetar para quem não conseguir entrar. Uh, okay. We will be uh, mirroring the screen from the mural here. So if someone cannot access the, the mural, don't worry, you'll be able to, to watch the and interact with us through here. Okay. So um, if you want to download the opportunities, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, this is a link to the, the PDF with the seven opportunities and the cases, the business cases that we've mapped out. So double click on the file, you can download it. We have a, a Portuguese version and an English version. And we have a, a, plat, a Casa Firjan platform here. If you are curious about our work, you can click here. Um, Okay, everyone are okay with mural. Someone is the in the first contact with the mural. First time. First time. Okay, so um, I am summoning you to follow my mouse here. So don't be scared. It's not a virus. It's just me. <laughs> I am summoning you to a uh, quickly introduction to the mural, okay? So please uh, put your mouse here, near than mine, and a double click, create a post-it, okay? Let's try and have fun. We don't, uh, 
we don't show to a line, just click up and create a post-it, change the color, feel free and have fun. It's a post-it storm. Nice. And the second uh, exercise is try to write inside the post-it, okay? Just click on the post-it and write your name on or write hello world and hello everybody or something that you want to change. Nice, good. Hello, hello Juan. Okay, and you can change the text inside the other post-it if you click uh, when someone, when, when their text in the post-it, you can add it. <laughs> okay, nice. And mm -hmm. to paste the link, you can just uh, copy the link on the website and paste here. You are looking something like this. And to access a link, double click in the link. Okay. Nice. Okay, for the movements in this canvas, use the scroll to zoom in and zoom out. Okay. Experiment now. And to lateral movement to pass to, well, to, to move the, to the screen. To pen, the, the pen motion. To pen, yeah. The pen movement, uh, press the space bar and left button. Okay. Uh, if you're not using a mouse and you're using a mouse pad, you can use the pinch movement like as you do in, a, in your mobile phone. Or you can, uh, on this little side here, there is like a minus and plus. And the, pode, can, pode mostrar ali, Rose, o, o negocinho ali do lado que você pode botar o zoom? Uh, qual? Aqui embaixo, onde tem o um esqueminha. Não, no, I'm sorry. But in your... <laughs> In your right bottom side, there is a way of you to do zoom in and zoom out as well. Oh. Yes, yes, okay. this is it. <laughs> yes. You can click here. Perfect. It's a navigation map. Okay. So this is a basic introduction. I can see some fun, someone having fun designing stuff. Okay, <laughs> it's our fun part. Uh, well, Even our look workshop. Like yeah. the sugar loaf here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the sugar loaf, definitely nice. And well, to finish our introduction, okay, I will summon you again. Nice. You have a bar, a toolbar at the left, so you can click in these icons and to 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 drag the elements onto the canvas, like mm -hmm. post-its or icons or text. You can experiment this now. Just click on the on the post-it on the bar and drag into the the canvas. Okay, nice and have fun. It's my favorite part. No, no, no. My favorite part is the, the big challenge, but it's the second wife. It's my second favorite part. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. I can see everyone uh, get the basic steps on the mural. So we can start our our co-creation session um, and Karina okay for we start with the persona right because the time yeah. uh, so sorry I think someone has an open a TV or something that is uh, going through but okay uh, we had planned an exercise so you guys could give us uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves and your fab lab and etc but since we are short on time we are going straight to the co-creation part 
And uh, we are gonna start by defining which persona we are doing. So we have to remember that right now, what we are thinking, what we want to do is create a service uh, for uh, companies that, so that companies can relate. Uh, why is it important so that we start with personas? The general persona of a fab lab is a maker. It's a person that uh, goes there because it already knows the technology. It already, or at least is already interested in that. So it's a person that voluntarily uh, shows up in your space. Uh, but what we are saying now is that we want to actively reach companies. We want them to know that uh, a fab lab has a lot of opportunities for them. So we need to start understanding a little bit with whom we are talking. Like, are we talking to... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Jose loves this that she can take out and reveal. So uh, we are going to start by two. Uh, we are you are going to choose with us which persona we are going to work with. So we have two to present. Uh, we uh, first off we have a business person. So here we are talking about a leader or owner or or management or someone that is in the management position of a company, uh, he, he finds the, a challenge to have uh, a dedicated time to its, to its team. And he feels the pressure to be constantly uh, updating everything, updating the process, innovating, and being this person that leads the transformation inside the company. But this person is also someone that might not be the best gateway to this company like it is a person that is in a management position so it has a different type of approach so we are bringing a second persona that we call the specialist the specialist is someone that is well positioned in his in his business in his working life i'm sorry uh in his working life he knows where he's going with his career he uh, uh he already works in that field for a long a, a lot of times and he is a person that has some reach to the leadership, but he's still not a leader, at least not a official leader, like in, in, in a, an official position. So uh, we understand that those are the two uh, personas that we can, we can reach and the way to talk to each one of them is different. So we wanna know from you, let's vote in here, uh, sorry. Rose, você vai fazer a votação lá no, no, no Mural? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Rose will start the a, a voting session. To vote okay. in one of these personas, you just have to click around it, like click on the on the icon. And we are going to start by deciding with with uh, which one of those we are talking. Are we going to talk to the businessman and the leadership? Or we are going to talk to the specialist that might uh, bring an idea to the leadership. And to vote, just click on one image that you want to. Okay. Just click in the image. So let's start. And. Okay, four people are voting. I'm waiting for 10 seconds. And I am ending voting session. Dun -dun -dun. Okay, we have uh, three votes today specialists. We are working. Oh man, <laughs> and the business person three votes too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Karina, you have a vote now. <laughs> I have a vote? Yeah. Come on. We... Yeah, no? Let me... Isabella, did you vote? Yeah. Isabella? Um, oh, you didn't. <laughs> so which one do you choose? I voted the for business. business man. And I can explain a bit why I voted for the businessman, so maybe other people can relate. Oh, okay. So you're going to convince Please. everyone to vote for the, for the businessman. I yes. like it. 
No, because I think people involved in Fab Labs and makerspaces are more in the tech side and they understand better the tech side and probably it's easier for them to talk to the specialist, but we are um, sometimes not too much into the business side. So we could learn something from this workshop, like how to nice. relate to the business people. You gain okay. my votes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Isabella gave you your, her vote. So we are going with the business person. Like we are not calling him the businessman because it could be either way, but let's go. Thank you, so, Juan, for sharing your comment. <laughs> yes. I think it's a very good insight. It's someone that we don't necessarily talk to, like we don't reach with a maker space. So it's gonna be an interesting uh, exercise to try and think how to communicate to this person um, what a Fab Lab is and what an opportunity it is. So we are gonna start a little uh, uh, other three voting sessions. Okay, so we want to get to know this person a little bit more. So in your vision, what is the level of understanding of digital manufacturing that the business uh, person has? Like, is he, does he know only the basics? He doesn't even know exactly what it is. Uh, is he an intermediate? So he had some contact and he might understand a little bit more the opportunities and we don't necessarily have to explain everything from scratch or is he in advance then you think that he will already get to get with us thinking about which solution he can apply so let's vote again one person okay finishing Four votes to the basic understanding of digital manufacturing. Okay, and perfect. Three votes to intermediate. No one voted in the advanced. Poor business person. He knows nothing about it, apparently. <laughs> so we are going with the basic. So we need, we need to all the time keep that in mind. We are talking to a person that knows nothing about how strategic this can be. So we are gonna keep that in mind too throughout the whole, the rest of our uh, exercise. So the second uh, a question we are going to answer is how much time will he invest on this Fab Lab solution? How much time will he be um, attending to presentations to first to explain the strategic side of it? How much time will he uh, be reviewing solutions that our fab lab are providing to him like uh that's it how much time do you think he can invest on this type of thing so he has no time he has just a few hours per week i think even hours is a little bit much uh, or he has all the time he needs. He thinks that this is pivotal for his, his business and he's going to give a lot of attention to it. Okay, five people are voting. And one people, one person <laughs> ending the voting session. Um, four votes. He has just a few hours per week. Oh, nice. So we have an engaged business person. Mm -hmm. He's even, uh, he is uh, willing to have some time with it. And he wants to understand because he is a person concerned about going and innovating his business. And he thinks that the Fab Lab is going to be a good solution for him. So uh, how did he found out about the Fab Lab? What, what was the gateway for the maker world that make him want to search a solution for his company? Um, he has a teammate that knows about it, or he has the internet or social media or advertising. So we would be ad advertising and he would connect with that type of communication, or he is, a, he is from a company that has connections to the university so he comes through that uh, connection. Four people are voting. And okay. 
ending routine session. And a teammate talked about the Fab Lab to him. Oh, that's interesting. That was not was what I was expecting. So nice. <laughs> So he has teammates that were doing something like that. He's a business, a business person or he's a businessman. And he knows people that are uh, in sync with the maker world. So it's nice. He already has some inside information. And maybe we don't have to start from zero or from scratch. Uh, and now, uh, now it's an open question. It's not a voting session anymore. And we will ask for each one of you to get a post-it, remembering double click creates a post-it in place and, and write which types of product or problems you think that he would come to FabLab to solve. So how much, what problems? He's gonna try to make a prototype. He's gonna try to uh, test out some technology for his assembly line. He's going to uh, try to promote a service of customization, which, which are the, the problems you think he's going to try to make? I'm starting um, a chronometer. Uh, we have uh, two minutes to answer this question. One minute. And we can see that um, the most people say that uh, this businessman goes to Fab Lab asking for help to prototype something. But we have some interesting answers too. I think we can vote again. Yeah. Like you guys are very participative. We have, have a lot of options. So uh, we are now going to vote again. Uh, which one of those problems are we gonna try to solve with our service? Let me start a voting session. Okay, everyone can vote. Two people are voting. Okay, ending voting session. And we have three votes to trying to reduce cost costs and or decrease time for a process. And two Very votes nice. to he's trying to innovate using technology, but he doesn't know how to do it. And we'll vote to he's trying to make a prototype uh, to a new product. So go with trying to reduce costs or okay. decrease time. Mm -hmm. So now we are bringing this down, right? And yes. we are going to try and describe a little bit better. What is this problem? Like, why does he think that uh, he can reduce costs and decrease the time for, for a process? using FabLab technology and how could we uh, how could we start thinking about how can we solve this problem what is a does someone want to take a lead and, and write a post-it i think that this is a moment that we could discuss here like open your mic let's uh 
talk a little bit and we can go writing whatever we, we say here together. And this problem is a good link with our material, the seven opportunity material for you to lead later. So um, some company uh, went to your fab lab sometimes asking for help to solve this problem, to try to reduce costs or decrease time for a process. Everyone in this session have this contact with the industry. No. Guys, don't leave us hanging. Someone open the mic, talk to us. <laughs> <gasps> nice. Okay, so we are writing over there. You feel more comfortable like that? Okay. Yes. And don't be shy. You can write in the way you feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, I and the first the question is confusing me when it's written how is the chosen problem but anyway uh, I'm, I'm looking at a situation where he's working maybe on some woodwork and he, instead of using the, the hand tool which is taking long and he wants to produce many so he's coming to the public so that it can be designed and get position within uh, for a given uh, item, and then so many can be produced without having to errors. So that, that will co will reduce cost of production, and at the same time, production can be done. Faster. Oh, I cannot hear very well because um I don't know if if he use you are using a microphone or um. Because there are some noise. Would you? Uh, maybe, maybe where I am, so it's having a lot of echo. So maybe let me just try it. Oh, Martin, now it's better. Oh. Yeah, so I, oh, I, was giving, uh, I was giving an example of a situation where somebody wants to make something, let's say, uh, even. Um, a bed top and he has a big order, let's say desk for school. So he is coming to the fab lab so that he is able to, to get, uh, to get the, them cut within the same precision. And then so many can be, can be cut within the shortest time. So he's not going to lose, uh, he's not going to lose on the material because of wrong cutting. And at the same time, he's also not going to lose on the time because a lot can be cut within the same time, then only assembly is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, how it how it's the company? What is the company? Uh, hello? I think, I think you're giving an example, like a generic yeah. example of how you can uh, cut costs, like what is it's your, it's our problem here. Like you can go and try the time of production in a different technology than you have in your assembly line traditionally. So you can see how much faster you are actually cutting your pieces or doing your, your, your material. Yes. Was that it? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's very nice. Like it is a, something that we can think to provide, like you can test different technologies between in, in not between inside the fab lab that you don't have in your production line, and you can see if that's a good thing that that serves you. Like if you don't have a CNC or if you don't have a laser cut, if it makes sense, you can test the materials, the cuts, the speed, and how it is. This is very nice. Um, Let's see what, what else we have here. Yeah, you can do like, uh, I don't know if that's what they uh, were trying to say when they said loose material, but I guess we, you could do like um, an appropriate, um, I don't know this word in English, but like you can use completely the material so you can make a scheme and try it 
and see how much loose material you have so you can optimize the the cuttings and the, the organization of some cuttings in the in the same plane that's really nice we, we call it zero waste oh zero okay waste zero waste yeah hey i have to run thank you very much you guys are terrific keep up the good work oh, okay bye -bye. thank you i'll be in touch next time i'm in rio <laughs> <laughs> okay bye uh, actually, we do have to accelerate those. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are very, uh, yeah, into the time. So we are going to move forward, okay? Uh, we are going to pass a little bit faster than we were expecting. And uh, so we, the, sec the, the next step would be for us to think in our collective knowledge here, uh, what were the solutions problem? Uh, that we already seen for this type of things. Um, uh, and we were gonna choose one of the solutions, like we are gonna go for it. Uh, Rose, o que você vai fazer, cara? A gente já passou da hora pra caraca. Pois I'm é. sorry, I'm, so, I'm speaking in Portuguese because we don't have time. <laughs> how, how are you guys with time? We can also just provide the, the framework for you guys so we can uh, finish up later. As we said in the beginning, I don't think everyone was here. We actually programmed this workshop to be longer. We, mis we misunderstood the time and we thought we had a lot more time with you. Uh, and we were trying to make it on time, but unfortunately it's not possible because we are already out of it. What do you guys prefer? We stay, would you stay a little bit longer with us here or would you prefer us to just send you the framework? Explain a little bit the framework and you guys can, can uh, fill it in individually afterwards. Rose, o que você prefere? Porque eles não estão falando. Acho que a gente pode então passar. Tá. É... Uh, so we are going to go and show the methodology because we think that's a, a, a really take out of this. Okay, because it is a process. It's some way that you can look and construct a, a, a service tailored to the necessities you see in your own fab lab. So uh, after describing the problem, we would go and do a research and find out if there is any fab lab or a makerspace already providing this type of service and understanding what is the solution they are getting at and understanding as well, how can we contextualize to our, our, brother, our problem? Like how can we, uh, we bring that to our fab lab? And then we would go into the solution, try and describe the solution as better as we can and developing it. Uh, we are here proposing that you consider unexpected challenges. We brought it in a fun way so you can see like the, in, in this uh, small cards. Um, cards, yeah, thank you. In the small cards, there are like challenges we always see like the, cha the, the clients change their mind or the, the team has fewer people than the deal actually demands. And we, we are proposing that you start thinking about this type of challenges because they are more common than we know. And we need to consider these possibilities and be able to actually work around it. So we would uh, uh, select two of them for, for you guys to work with and then construct the solution. And then the resolution we propose that you uh, start by filling out this, the, this phrase which starts with the solution is often the service. So describe here the service that you are providing uh, uh, is offered the service of, describe the service using the technology. So define the technology that you're using or the technologies you are making available for this, con this, this uh, client so that the client can, and then you do whatever you actually want, trying to do what you are providing with the service and may solve the problem, which is the problem we already established here. The result will be considered a success if, so here you, you do measurements, like how do you measure the success of your process, of your 
of your service. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm, sp I'm speed talking here, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, the content that Jose presented, which is very nice, the Fab Stormy, is it's here provided for you guys the, in English and Portuguese. And this material and framework will be available for you for, around, for one month. In one month, we will take you out of the air, but we encourage you to use it and try in other projects and, and try to use this path and this train of thought uh, that it has been working for us in a lot of projects uh, in different areas, including the Fab Lab. So, Thank you so much. I'm sorry we passed so much of the time. Thank you for being here, whoever is here with us until the end. And we are sorry you did not manage to reach the, the end of the, the activity with you. Don't worry. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Karina, how, how can I continue learning from you? Because actually, um, as Fabla Winam, one of the things that we are really struggling with is how to make I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Sorry. Can you just say it again? I was not hearing you properly. Okay, I was asking how how can we how can we work with you or rather how can you help us to understand this this business concept so well? Because as public we know, one of the things that we are struggling with is how to do business and how to get resources to run our activities. It has been hell. But uh, I even say I was having a conversation with somebody, how do we do business and, and make sure that we can have a cash flow. Nice. So if you if you if you can accept then you can hold our hands to learn more from you so that we are able to do proper business from from a to business. Thank you. Karina? Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I just closed my camera because I just put my face into the computer because I was not hearing, but now I can open it again. Uh, so, uh, it is something that you actually have to work on in your specific project. Like, we could uh, talk with you, like, maybe we can exchange contact and we can talk further, but uh, actually, uh, making the project of how you get revenue it's very site specific it's very difficult to actually have a predetermined ways but some uh, very basic ones is actually you have like a, uh, you can provide the you have i'm sorry let me rephrase you can make actual products of this like i sell you the consultancy in optimization of your uh, of a project line or i sell you the opportunity of actually making a prototype inside my lab so i'm selling you the expertise of my my uh collaborators the people that are there in my my lab i'm selling you maybe some uh, expertise in closing the files and making them digital in the right format i'm selling you the time in the machine the space, the, the, the reunions and etc. So all of this is expert time that you are providing and you can actually uh, put a cost to it. Uh, but as I said, it is very site specific. It is very contextualized to it, depending on where you are. So we need to understand a little bit better your reality and the reality of the clients you are trying to reach to actually be able to make a project of how to get a, a, a revenue, a, a significant revenue out of this. But uh, I, we did not explain this because we are very, we were very rushed, but uh, we are from Fijan. Fijan is the uh, institute that uh, connects all the industry of the state of Rio de Janeiro uh, in Brazil. So we are very connected to the manufacturing lines and the, the industry. And we are constantly thinking about how can we make the Fab Lab a service moment, a service hub that can provide solutions to the industry. So uh, this proximity, we think it is the sort of the future of the maker movement 
it started to uh, more in an, in the individual, and I think it's growing progressively towards a more uh, business oriented uh, business. <laughs> right. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, anyway, we are going to leave our contacts in the in the chat, I believe, and you can reach us, and we can talk a little bit more about it. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And Gonzalo and Zora, uh, you have any questions too? Or do you want to share some experience? Oh, thank you for chatting, Gonzalo. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> and so, guys, um, is it the end? I think so. So thanks everyone. Like Jose already put the, our email, the email of our Fab Lab in the chat. Anyone that wants to talk to us, uh, please feel free to reach out and use the framework. We, it's going to be available for one month for you guys. It is a nice way of uh, organizing your thoughts and the creation of a service. And thank you so much for all the interaction. Yeah. And have a, a nice end of Fab Lab uh, 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, thank Carlos you. Isabella. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It was interesting. Actually, it's it's midnight right, right now here, yeah. but I had to wait for this. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Such a harsh time to be awake. <laughs>